Most of the time, it works instantaneously like this. And I mean, when we first started demonstrating this, say, to the military, people were going, oh, no, come on. I mean, no, look. Oh, it's because you're off the TV, isn't it? You know, people believe this nonsense, you know, this sort of stuff. And they were skeptical, understandably. Let me demonstrate it with you now so that we can either do this for a traumatic experience you've had, yeah, or you can use it on a block. Because some people say, I'm blocked in my relationships or my business. Either a block or pick something upsetting, like a, yes, that car crash I was in, or oh, that awful thing that happened. So here we go. Hey, who here would like more confidence, more optimism, more motivation, more happiness? Anybody interested in that? You see, um, as far as I'm concerned, success and happiness are not accidents that just randomly happen to some people and not to others. Success and happiness are created by certain ways of thinking and acting in the world. Now, I've noticed uh, that over the last couple of years, people have engaged in kind of two uh, ways of thinking and behaving which are, are dysfunctional, they're unproductive. And the first is, a lot of people have been anxious, they've worried, they've gotten stressed, understandably, because, you know, if you open a newspaper, you turn on the TV, you're under attack. It's the virus, it's the economy, it's the war, it's whatever it is, yeah? And so, understandably, people are concerned, yeah? And a proportion of people have gotten into worrying too much. They do what we call catastrophizing. So they think, oh, this could go wrong, and that could go wrong. And I'm like sick, and family members might die, and they got a mirror crash. And they do all these things in their mind all the time, and so they get really good at it. They kind of practice it. Anybody here done that over the last uh, couple of years? Yeah, a few, a few people, yes? You know, in fact, um, there was a great saying by Mark Twain, which is, um, I've been through some terrible experiences in my life, and some of them actually happened. So, for those of you that have been winding yourself up, uh, I've got something great to get you into a nice, peaceful place. Now, also, I've noticed that because with all the lockdowns and the changes in the rules and regulations, a lot of people are normally quite motivated um, because there are too many moving parts, there's no end point, etc. They sort of plan something and they think, oh, I won't bother and I'll stop and I'll start. And then they go, oh, I'll just give up. And they lose their sense of motivation and direction. Anybody found that over the last uh, few years? Yes. Okay, you're in the right event because you're in a room with a hypnotist for the next hour. <laughs> And yeah, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be doing demonstration, very simple. I'm going to ask somebody to volunteer, I'll demonstrate something, and then I'm going to do it to everybody. So it's like a mass coaching session, yeah? Everything, yes, that's right. The, su the suggestions go out into the audience and into your subconscious mind and make you feel good for no particular reason other than they do. So we're talking about stress and anxiety. I'd like somebody to help me with this first demonstration who, hang on. Wait, who's been through a trauma, one trauma, and you can't get over it, right? So I'm talking about a single trauma, a car crash, a bereavement. Yeah, not a lifetime of abuse. We could use it for that, but not here on the stage. There's a lady. Can you just tell me what, I, I just need to know what the trauma is, ma'am, just because I'm going to ask you to come up if it's, if it's going to fit. It's what? Psychosis. That's, and well, what, what is that? I don't know either, actually. No. Okay, you know, I, I need something like, I need one event. Ma'am, what's, what's your event? Your father died, and you're sad. Yes. Come and join me. Let's give the lady a nice big round of applause, shall we? <laughs> Hi. Oh, you got a microphone. Great. Step into my office, please. Okay. Um, hi. What's, uh, what's your name? Uh, Mabel. Your name is Mabel? Yeah. Yes. Where about you from? I'm from Holland. From Holland? Very nice. I'm from Holland. Oh. Hang on. Goedemiddag. No. Goedemorgen. Goedemiddag, goedemorgen. Yeah, I, my, my Dutch is not so great. Yeah. So, your, your father died, and understandably... When, when was this, may I ask? Uh, almost a year ago. A year ago. And you feel sad? Yes. Yeah. You know, when my father died, I've never felt so fucking sad in my entire life. And uh, it took me a while to get over it, and I did. Now, if I... Known at the time what I know now, I could have done it quicker because he wouldn't want me to feel sad, right? Mm. Your father wouldn't want you to feel sad, would he? No, I no. don't think so, no. Okay. When I die, I want everyone to feel very sad. In fact, I would like a state funeral. I like, do you know, the faces of all my detractors put up on television and people say, Are you sorry now what you said? So, what I'm going to do with you, Mabel, if it's okay, is I'm going to do a process which is called a psychosensory therapy. Now, you may have seen there's a number of these about. There's one where you look up and move your eyes about. Not too impressed with that. There's another where you tap on various parts of the body. 
pretty good. But the best one of the lot involves a touch of here, 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 and lateral eye movement. So not looking up, which is alpha, looking side to side, which is delta, right? Because when you get traumatized, what happens is a 100 hertz wave travels from the thalamus and phosphorates what's called the amper receptors, right? A little technical, I know. But when we touch here, let me just try this, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm going to ask you all to do it in just a moment. List, oh, that feels nice. Yep, yeah, that's a good. You know, I'm just going to grab the mic, that's okay. And that's it. Just do that because it feels comforting. Because when you were a baby, your mother held you in her arms and she touched you here and it hardwired you to produce delta waves. Now, if it's okay, Mabel, I'm going to ask you to put your, that's it, your legs like, legs like that, and your hands like that. There we go. There we go. And your arm, ah, fantastic. Good. And I'm going to touch the side of your arms here and your palms here, if that's okay, yeah? Now, I want you to go inside and summon the sadness. And it's okay, because I'm here, and it's all going to be okay. Because we're going to summon the sadness before we reduce the sadness. Is that okay? Okay, so go inside. That's it. Collect the grief and the sadness. There you go. Collect it up. That's it. There you go. Oh, that's sadness, you know. And it, it's, it's, when somebody we love is gone, of course we should feel sad. It's, it's normal. It's human. It's, you know, otherwise we wouldn't be able to have any sense of value. And when you've got all the sadness, tell me Yes. Yes, and clear your mind. Clear your mind. And I'd like you to imagine that we're walking together on a beach. And with each footstep that you take in the sand, I'd like you to count out loud, please, from 1 to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Keep your eyes closed and move them laterally to the left and laterally to the right. And eyes to the left and eyes to the right. And eyes to the left and eyes to the right. Eyes to the left and eyes to the right. Now, I'd like you to just tell me about a happy time, any happy time, a time when you were laughing. I'd like you to remember it now. Maybe you were laughing with friends or you were watching a movie or something. Or maybe you were just smiling and feeling good. Tell me about a time and return to it now, Mabel. Um, just now. <laughs> just now? <laughs> just when we were dancing on the podium. When you were dancing on the podium. And what is it you remember about dancing on the podium? Just a feeling in my body and laughing and a good energy. That's great, that great energy. Yeah, return to it like you're back there again now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel how good you felt. That's ah, great, isn't it? And then, eyes to the left, eyes to the right. 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 Now, what I'd like you to do is I want you to put your sadness in this hand here. So get in touch with Mabel's grief and sadness. See, we all need an ecosystem of emotions. You know, fear tells you, get out of the way, there's a bus coming. Yeah? Or anger, one of our standards has been violated, someone's been rude to us. And grief and sadness is to do with loss. Because when somebody we love is gone, sure, we should feel sad, but we don't want to feel it forever. Because it's done its job and it's signaled to you that, that, that somebody you love is gone. So I want to say thank you very much to the sadness Thank you for doing the job that you've been doing, but you don't need to signal as loud or as often. And it understands that, doesn't it? Yeah. Now this hand, Mabel, put peace, calm, comfort. Peace, calm, comfort. There we go. And I'd like you to move your attention up here above your head where my fingers are clicking and experience the two emotions at the same time, the grief and the peace, the grief and the calm. The grief and the comfort, sadness and peace, sadness and calm, sadness and comfort. Here we go. Now, open your eyes. Come on back out. Ta-da. Hi. 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 Do you feel sad? No. Think about your dad. Feel sad? No, I do not. <laughs> Try and get sad. We... <laughs> <laughs> You can't get it back, right? No. no. It was really weird when, hmm. with my hands, I mm -hmm. just my left hand felt much heavier mm -hmm. with the peace and the, the grief. with the grief and the, I don't know, it just it just felt different. The peace, the peace was bigger than the grief. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's great. And so it will be from this day forth. Thank you so much for coming up. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Thank you. All right. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, crikey, that took about eight minutes, didn't it? I mean, you know, not months of bloody therapy, etc. So people go, well, it won't last, will it? I mean, you know, well, why are you here on stage? No, it actually does. Um, the, the science on this, this technique is called havening, as in a safe haven. It was created by my dear friend, uh, Dr. Ronald Rudin. He's, he's a brilliant um, physician. He's also a Harvard PhD in neuropharmacology, so he's a sort of unusual hybrid of uh, operator and researcher. And um, he researched all the psychosensory therapies, and he came up with this. And uh, we've been doing it for about 10 years now. There's a number of scientific studies. We've been doing it on people who are hardcore veterans, rape victims, you know, bereavement cases, people who've been through severe trauma. And most of the time, it works instantaneously like this. And, I mean, when we first started demonstrating this, say, to the military, people were going, oh, no, come on. I mean, no, look. Oh, it's because you're off the TV, isn't it? You know, people believe this nonsense, you know, this sort of stuff. And they were sceptical, understandably. Let me demonstrate it with you now so that we can either do this for a traumatic experience you've had, yeah, or you can use it on a block. Because some people say, I'm blocked in my relationships or my business. And I go, well, what do you see when you think about the block? And they say, well, I see a mound of sort of horrible or a, or a wall or something. And after we've done this process, the block is gone. So either a block or pick something upsetting, like a, yes, that car crash I was in, or, oh, that awful thing that happened. So here we go, side of the arms. What I'd like you to do is stroke the side of your arms and close your eyes, please. And that's right. Get in touch with the upset or the block. That's it. Get it as strong as you can, please. That's it. Fantastic. Get it as strong as you can because we're summoning it all before we banish it. See, what happens is once you flood the brain with delta, it dephosphorates the AMPA receptors. It creates a biological change in the landscape of your brain. So keep stroking the side of your arms. Summon the, the negative feeling. Summon it as much as you can, as much as you can. That's it. And then clear your mind. Completely clear your mind. And imagine we're walking on a beach. And count with me, please, as we take some footsteps in the sand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Keep stroking the side of your arms, please. And with your eyes closed, move them laterally to the left and laterally to the right. Laterally to the left and laterally to the right. Laterally to the left and laterally to the right. And that's it, eyes to the left and eyes to the right. Eyes to the left. Eyes to the right. And then I'd like you to remember a time that you were either smiling, laughing, you were having fun. Maybe you were on a vacation or you were with friends or maybe you just won an award or something like that. Some wonderful experience that you can return to. That's it. A time when you felt really good and return to it like you're back there again now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel how good you felt. Make the colors rich, bright, and bold. Make the sounds loud. The feeling strong. Ooh, that's good. That's it. As you feel those good feelings, still stroking the side of your arms. And then move your eyes to the left and your eyes to the right. Eyes to the left, eyes to the right. Eyes to the left, eyes to the right. Eyes to the left, eyes to the right. And then I'd like you to keep your eyes closed, but relax your hands and put them in your lap, palms facing up. And... In one of your hands, I'd like you to put the, the emotion that's connected with this upset. So it might be, might be grief, it might be anger, it might be fear, it might be, or it might be this block thing, yeah. And just get in touch with it and realize that it has a purpose. It's signaling something to you. Yeah, the job of any emotion is to say, watch out, look at this, like, be, be aware of this, yeah. But sometimes these things overdo their job. They signal too long and too loud and too often, yeah. So we're going to say thank you very much for doing your job. Appreciate it. Just do it less. That's right, less and less and less and less. And your unconscious mind understands what I'm saying. And it's taking it in, it's making the changes at the unconscious level because in your other hand, I'd like you to put peace, calm, comfort, peace, calm, comfort. Then move your attention a few inches above your head, so you're thinking from above your head, that's it, keep your attention up above your head and then experience the two things at the same time way down there, that's it, keep your attention up there and experience the, the uncomfortable emotion and peace, the uncomfortable emotion and calm, the uncomfortable emotion and 
Comfort. That's it. Uncomfortable emotion. Peace. Calm. Comfort. Open your eyes. Come on back out. Woo. So, you guys went pretty deep. Who now, when they think about the problem, the upset, the trauma, the block, or whatever it is, feels different? Just show me. Nice. So, what I was going to talk about next is, um, basically, everything that you achieve, right, comes from your behaviors. So whether it's, you know, boiling an egg or making a million bucks, you know, the way you interact, the way you behave with the world, um, it determines the results you get. Now, what drives the behaviors? Well, what we call in, so I'm a, an NLP, so what we would call an NLP, a uh, neurophysiological state. What's a state? Well, state would be confidence, could be love, could be anger, could be apathy, could be fear, could be motivation, could be creativity, could be anything. These are all states. The state of mind you're in, the state of mind and body you're in when you're on the internet and you're engaged with something is different to when you're sitting back on the couch and relaxed. The state of mind and body you're in when you're driving a car is different to when you're taking a bath. Yep. So, what creates these states? Well, it's the pictures we make inside our mind and the things that we say to ourselves, yeah? So the visual and the audio. And what's happening is all day long we're making pictures and we're talking to ourselves, yeah? We're saying things like, you know, everyone has an internal dialogue, yeah? I mean, you know, locate yours right now. So just show me where it is. Is it at the front of your head? Is it at the back? Is it, there's a couple of people going, well, I don't think I have an internal dialogue. Do I have an internal dialogue? Yeah, that voice there, that's the one. Yeah, here you go. So just locate it because we use a voice to guide us through life, right? You know, we go, oh, I must remember to call Frank. Oh, looks nice. Uh, mm, maybe I'll do that later. Oh, hang on, etc. So we've got an internal dialogue talking to us all day long. And the thing is that when it supports us and when it helps us, that's great. When it's offering us, you know, constructive advice. But let me show you an again example of how uh, people get conditioned with internal dialogue or audio. I want somebody to th show me, um, sorry, somebody to, to demonstrate with who had something said to them once upon a time. And it was really mean. It could be a long time ago when you were a kid or something like that. It was really mean, you know. It was like maybe you're ugly or stupid or something like that. Something that was said years ago. And even now, when you think about it, it upsets you. Anybody got something? Oh, hang on. Let's just, let me, here we go. Ooh. So, lady here. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Hi. So, um, what is your, your name, by the way? Toots. Toots. Okay, Toots. Now, what was the thing that was said to you? Um, I was told that all the things that I have are broken. All the things that you have are that, broken. That I that I cherish because I saw things that it didn't bother me that there was something wrong with something. I saw the beauty in it, and and I and I loved it regardless of whether it was chipped or anything. And I was told that. Uh, all the things you loved were broken. And even now, when you think about that, that upsets you, right? Yes, I know. Okay, hang on, there's help at hand. I've done this before. Okay, so, Toots, who said it to you, by the way? Uh, my ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Put his face here. And he said, all the things you love are broken. Those exact words. Um, the exact words? Yes. Yeah. Look at his face here. Now, I want you to hear the words come out like this. All the things you love are broken. All the things you love are broken. Hear it again. Look at his face. All the things you love are broken. 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 So, think about it now. Can you feel upset? <laughs> I've already got a little while. Can you no. feel? No, no. You are healed. Another healing. Okay. <laughs> So, so the, the reason I'm, I'm saying this is because, you know, people get told things like, be quiet, Shh, no one wants to hear what you have to say when you're a little kid, and there's your fear of public speaking, you're, or, you know, something, you're not artistic, or you're, you know, I was told I would never amount to anything, you know, and I'm the sort of person who just naturally, I think, well, I'll show you. So what we're going to do is, if we've ever had something said to us that's really mean, we're just going to play with this for a moment, because I want to show you that basically the coding, the neurocoding, is where it, is in, in, where, where it appears in your head, the loudness of it, and the tone and everything. And so when you change it, and we make it ridiculous, as we did with Tush just then, you can't take it seriously, right? Yes, yeah, so you attach a whole new set of feelings, and poof, it's gone. Not months of therapy, minutes. Okay, so think about something mean that was said to you, like you stupid, useless, ugly fool, or something like that, right? And I want you to hear it inside your mind like this. And look at the person's face and hear them go, 
That's it. I research all the tonalities to find the one that nobody can take seriously. Good. So, what, try this as an experiment. Now I'd like you to hear your own internal dialogue speak to you like this. I just want you to duplicate it inside your head, make it big and as loud as you'd like, and I'd like you to hear it say these words. All is well. All is well. All is well. Now, that's the sounds. What about the pictures? Well, all day long we're making pictures, aren't we? You see, someone says to you, hey, fancy coming to a party? And you go, and you make a picture inside your mind in a split second of, you know, you're standing there, feeling a bit awkward, don't really know anyone. No, sorry, I can't make it to the party. Or maybe you make a different picture. Someone says, hey, you fancy coming to a party? Make a little movie inside your mind of you hanging out and, you, you know, having some fun and a few drinks. It's great. And you go, yeah, what time's the party? All day long, we're making pictures that either move us away or towards things. You know, from the moment we wake up all throughout the day. The thing is that a lot of people don't take time to program their mind through their own pictures, you see, and let other people do it, you know? So what we're going to do is we're just going to do some more thought experiments, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I want to show you how these things affect you. For example, you know, years ago, I remember this rock star came to see me, and he had a fear of flying, and I said, so, you know, if I was going to fill in for you for the day, because I'm not frightened of flying, how do I do it? And he said, I imagine getting to the airport, and I say to myself, this is going to be bad. And then I get on the plane and I hear the door go chunk. And I think, I can't get out, you know, like you'd want to, 30,000 feet. But anyway, this is this mad mind, right? And then he goes, um, and I imagine the plane taking off and, and, and then the cabin fills with smoke, a pillow scream, and then it crashes and my daughter's face goes, Where's daddy? And I thought, Good God, if I had that in my mind, I'd be upset too. So, I see, I could have a different movie. I think about getting on a plane, sitting back, relaxing, something to eat, glass of wine, movie. I think about where I'm going. I think about where I'm going. Now, let's just try a quick thought experiment then, shall we? I'd like you to close your eyes just for a moment. Don't go into a deep trance just yet. That's coming later. And what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to remember a time that you felt really, really good and return to it like you're back there again now. Maybe it was a time you'd fallen in love, or maybe you're just hanging out with friends, or, or you were doing something like um, enjoying a beautiful day, or some activity that you, know, you feel great about. Return to it like you're back there again now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel how good you felt. That's right. And relive those feelings all over again. That's it. Let them wash over you. Because, see, the human nervous system doesn't know the difference between a real and a vividly imagined experience. So when we return to the good times, what happens is we begin to get all those good feelings back, particularly if they're associated with deep pleasure. Yeah, more endorphins flooding around your body. That's right. There you go. That's a good. And then what I'd like you to do is... Make a movie screen in front of you, in your imagination. And on that screen, I'd like you to watch a movie of a you that's even more confident, even more happy, even more fulfilled, even more creative, even more in love with life. A you that feels fantastic. And just look at the way that you stand, the way you, your posture, the way you gesture, the way that you breathe. Look at the light behind your eyes. Look at the way that you interact, you connect with other people. Wow, look at that fantastic you. And when it looks really good, I'd like you to go over and float into that you and step inside. That's right. Step inside the posture of that happier, more confident, more fantastic, optimistic, creative you. And see through the eyes of your happier, more confident self. Hear through the ears and feel the good feelings. That's right. And then from this place, put another screen up and imagine an even more amazing you. A more, the, a more you that's even a more... A you that's even more confident, more capable, more optimistic, and more joyous. That's right. And look at the way that you stand, the way you, the way you sit, the way you interact with other people, your, your energy, the light behind your eyes. And then float over and into that you. That's it. Step into that you and see through the eyes of your happier self. Hear through the ears. Hear your internal dialogue. All is well. And feel how good this feels. That's right. Now take this good feeling and take it with you through the rest of the day. And take it with you into dealing with difficult people. 
And notice how good you feel as you are able to deal with challenging situations because you feel so much better. That's right, you feel really good about yourself. And then take it into your home life, your personal life. That's it, there you go. Feeling great, feeling really good, in love with life. Woo, that's right. Oh, good. And then open your eyes and come on back out. So the first bit, by the way, who feels good here? Anybody feel good? Oh, all right, fantastic. Oh, okay, okay. It's all right. Wait, there's more. So uh, the first bits of the equation for creating states are the sounds we make in our head, you know, the internal dialogue and things like that, things we remember that we said to us, and the pictures, right? And particularly when we're inside a picture, when we're inside a memory, it has greater emotional intensity than when we're outside of it. Now, the next part of the equation is physiology. So that's posture. That's the way we stand or sit, you know, muscle tension. Yeah, I mean, uh, so you see, cause you see, the mind and body are, are linked, right? So you know what it's like when you're really tense in your mind and you're you know, having kind of stressful thoughts, your body tenses up, you release more adrenaline. When you're relaxed in your mind, your body relaxes and vice versa. You can be really tense, you go for a massage and your mind relaxes as well as your body relaxes. You see, physiology is so important because over the years, nobody has ever come in to my office and gone, I'm depressed. No, <laughs> what's happened is, because there's a certain physiology with depression, right? There's, they come in and they go, yeah, you know, life is really cramming it, you know, and I'm just, you know, rubbish and looking at the ground. Like, that sort of thing, there's a whole voice tone that goes with being depressed, right? And so the thing is, when you change the physiology, you change the way you feel because, um, by the way, did you know that um, when you smile, right, when you smile, right, you actually release some serotonin. It's a happy neurotransmitter, yeah? Come on, just, just go on, show, show me your biggest smile, please. Oh, for Christ's sake, no, no, really, come on. <laughs> uh, so that, it's, a bit, it's a bit better. Look, 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 I tell you what, there's a good reason to do this, right? When you get good at doing this, right, you can sit in your office like this all day <laughs> and no one will bother you. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually, you can, you can get on public transport, right? And you do not need a newspaper to avert eye contact from the lunatic. When they get on the train, you know, they can get on, hey, could have been somebody. And, you know, you can be sitting there and you can go. <laughs> so let's just do an exercise that is silly but not stupid, because we're going to use our physiology to change how we feel. So we're going to do something silly, right? And it's very simple, this. In just a moment, I'd like you to do this. I'd like you to pull the biggest smile you've ever pulled, and make a, sp a specific noise with this at the same time. So I want you to go, on the count of three, I want you to go, <laughs> like this, right? And turn and look at the person next to you, right? And of course, you're going to laugh. That's the idea. It's silly, but it's not stupid. Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> now, there's one or two people who are, who are saying to themselves, oh, for God's sake. I mean, you know, I mean, you come for this. Uh, this is, uh, this is silly, right? But it's not stupid. So here we go. Let's, let's just, you know, let's, let's add something to it. Do you remember those toothpaste commercials back in, like, some of you remember the 70s, you know, guy or the girl would be walking down the street and she'd turn and her, uh, the teeth would sparkle. It'd go ding, like that. It's called the ring of confidence, right? So when you do it this time, go add a ding on the end, ready? <laughs> so one, two, three. <laughs> Excellent. Who feels good? Yeah. Woo! Because we've been using our mind and our body to create good feelings, you see? Yeah. We've been using our mind and body because, you know, remember at the beginning I said uh, success and happiness are not accidents. You know, they don't randomly happen. They come from certain ways of thinking and acting. Now, when you're thinking about things in a very positive way and you, you've got good movies going on in your head, good dialogue and good physiology, you know, everything's different. I remember years ago when I was a single man, right, I would, you know, I'd be at a discotheque or some sort of social gathering, and I'd think, I'm going to get up and I'm going to ask that girl to dance. And I'd get up, and the voice in my head, you see, this is before I had any control of this, the voice in my head would go, she is going to tell you to fuck off in front of everyone. <laughs> and uh, pictures would come up of times in the past I'd failed, and her telling me, get last man. And by the time I get over, I'd, I'd put myself in such a state, I'd go, I, mean, I don't suppose you want to, oh, no, okay, I'm an asshole, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, 
Once I mastered my internal sounds and pitches, I could do things like this. I could, I could stand up and hear inside my head a drum roll. Then a gospel choir go, he go to ask, they go to dance, oh yeah. And a voice would say, that lucky girl might get to dance with you. And as I'd arrive, I'd say, would you like to dance? If not, your loss. Yeah. Now, I'm clearly using comedy to make a point, right? So the, the, the point is that basically pictures and the sounds and our physiology all day long are driving how we feel. How we feel affects our behaviours and that affects the kind of results we get in the world. So, um, you know, as Vishan was saying earlier, this lovely thing about, you know, when you go into a room, lift everybody up. I mean, that's brilliant, isn't it? What a fantastic... Because everyone's going to feel drawn to you because, you know, you know what you're like. You're like basically, you're like... Um, uh, you're lots of atoms and molecules vibrating at density and frequency. So, so is this chair, and so is this table. Different density, different frequency. That's why tables, chairs, and human beings are different. But, you see, when you're in a happy, lovely state, yeah, all the atoms and molecules are vibrating on that lovely frequency. And, of course, you send that out to the universe, and you know what you send out, you can get back. You know, just a thought. Um, I want to talk about resilience for a moment, because I've got, well, I've got a few more minutes. Yeah, so I want to talk about resilience, because... A lot of people have been through tough times over the last two and a half years, and uh, resilience is often associated with bouncing back, you know, and toughing it out and that kind of stuff. And absolutely, resilience is about that. But resilience is also about adaptability. Now, from an area of science called cybernetics, we have something called the law of requisite variety. And the law of requisite variety is simple, which is the part of a system that has the most flexibility, ends up in control, always ends up in control of the system. Be it a family, be it a corporation, be it a political party, doesn't matter what it is, yeah? So the person that's got the most moves, the most ways of adapting to the environment, ends up master of their own destiny. And so over the last two and a half years, we've all had to adapt, right? We've had to do things differently. We've had to live our lives differently. And some people have found that easier than others, yeah? But super powerful achievers are great at adapting, yeah? And so I'd like to share with you a couple of techniques and thought experiments here to get you thinking about problems differently. In fact, I'd like you to think about your, your top three problems right now. What are they? I mean, don't tell me, just think about them. What's your, just take a moment to think about your top three problems. There you go. Okay, and pick one. Okay, now, what we're going to do, we may indeed solve it here and now, but the main thing is we're going to get you thinking differently around your problems. I mean, one of the reasons Einstein came up with such phenomenal uh, things like theory of relativity was because he was asking different questions. He was, you know, visualizing different, uh, from different positions. So he was thinking with greater flexibility. Right? See, because I'm going to ask you in just a moment to summon that problem, and I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions from something called decision theory, which and the idea with this is not necessarily to solve it, but it's to get you thinking differently, so you go, oh, I'm outside the problem now, oh, oh, and you can see more options, so you're more resilient, you're more creative, therefore you're more powerful, yeah? So first of all, I'm going to ask you in just a moment, what's one positive thing about this problem? Now, when I sometimes ask people this, they go, there is nothing positive about this problem. And when they tell you what it is, you go, well, but one of the positive things could be you know what the problem is, right? Or one of the positive things is I'm here helping you with this now. Or you see what I mean, yeah? So just want you to think outside. With this lady I worked with a while ago, she said she was, she was unwell, and she said, no, there's, there's nothing positive about the illness. I said, well, so at least you know what it is. At least you know you're getting treatment for it. And you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. She was so wrapped up in the problem. So the idea is, Think about the problem, and then I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. The first question is, think of one, two, or maybe three positive things about this problem right now. And even if they are, you know what the problem is, or you know that it might be solvable, or that I'm helping you with your problem, and I haven't finished helping you with it yet, because I'm going to ask you some other questions. What are you willing to do to solve this problem or transform this situation. What are you willing to stop doing or not do in order to solve or transform this situation or problem? What's something you could do to motivate yourself to solve this problem or change this situation? 
Actually, what's something you could do today to change this situation? Now, still with your eyes closed, what I'd like you to do is think about somebody who's really good at solving this kind of problem. Now, it could be a, an Elon Musk, it could be your Auntie Gladys, it doesn't matter. I'd like you to imagine they're there in front of you right now. And then float over and step into them and see the world through their eyes. Copy their physiology, hear their internal dialogue. Look at the world through the eyes of your problem-solving genius or coach or whatever it is, yeah? And now, look at your problem through their eyes and see the way they look at this, the way they view this. And then, take those realizations and float back out. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make a nine-square grid. Three squares at the top, three in the middle, three at the bottom. And I want you to fill in all squares, make it big, by the way, except the bottom middle one. Leave that blank for now. So in the, in the squares, I want you to put pictures of people that you love or, or people that love you, or both. Uh, things you love to do, moments you felt good, anything that empowers you and lifts your energy. So it could be a hobby or interest that you have. It could be something you've achieved. It could be, you know, anything. It could be just, oh, yeah, there was that great time. Blah, 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 blah. And fill eight of the squares with those really great pictures. That's right, so you're looking at people you love, things you love to do, things you've achieved, things that made you feel good. Ooh, that's it, make them colorful and bright and bold. That's right, that's it, good. And when you fill those eight squares, in the bottom middle one, put your problem. And then look at it in context. In context, context, context. Next, whoosh, clear that away, and I'd like you to travel out into the future to a time when you've solved this problem. That's it. And you don't know how far it is necessarily, or maybe you do. And when you look back, ask yourself how you did it. And you might know, or you might just have a sense of it, or you might not have a sense of it yet, but it doesn't matter. Because when you open your eyes in just a moment, you'll be back here, and I'll be with you. Now, once you open your eyes, I'd like you to, that's it, just take a moment and ask yourself, how's my problem different right now? Please come on back. So, who is thinking differently about their problem? Just show me. Oh, that's just great, great stuff, great stuff. Because we're using the power of human imagination. Now, everything you see around you right now, including us, we were just once a thought in somebody's head, right? And then it got created. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about in just a moment is the future. And it's a good idea to get uh, interested in the future because you're going to be spending the rest of your life there. <laughs> yeah? And I, I'm going to do a trance with you. I'm going to do a hypnotic trance. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going um, to get your unconscious mind, with your permission, to arrange the way you think about the future in a very resourceful way indeed. So that suddenly you see opportunity, you see hope, you feel good, you feel motivated, you've got a compelling future going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go deeper into trance. And one of my favorite meditations of all time is um, my friend Genpo Roshi does a fantastic meditation called Big Mind. And uh, about, um, about 10 years ago, they did a study on this amazing meditation at Utah University. And they, 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 would, they got one of these brain image resonancing chambers there. It costs about three million bucks, and you, know, you can't take any metal with you inside. And you sit down, and this thing like, like Darth Vader's helmet comes down over your head. <laughs> And you get a really good idea of the brain activity. And so what the researchers did was they would take a Dalai Lama, 20-year seasoned monk, and stick him there and they, you know, go off into his Samadhi, Samadhi Satori brain states. And they'd get a look at it. They'd get a map of it. And then they'd take someone off the street who'd never meditated in their life before. And uh, Genpo would get in the chamber with them and drop kick him into the same Samadhi Satori state. So you can imagine half the Zen world is going, wow. He's teaching this, you know, to everybody, to plumbers, accountants, students, mothers, etc. And the other half are pissed off because they've all been sitting in lotus with their shaved heads for the last 20 years <laughs> waiting for it. Right? So he's a fairly controversial uh, figure. So what we're going to do, first of all, is get interested in the future. And we're going to program into your unconscious based on what's important to you, right? What your values are. Because I don't want to install my model of happiness in you. I'd like you to elicit yours from your creative mind. So if you close your mind, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to put on a little bit of um, relaxing music. And that's right. And I'd like you to close your eyes, that's it, and just begin to relax the muscles 
around the side of your eyes. That's right. And then relaxing the muscles around the side of your mouth. That's it. Good. And then relaxing, that's right, around your neck and chest, down through your shoulders, arms, hands and fingers. And you can feel your hands resting. There you go, their weight, warmth and shape. And I'd like you to imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now. And then float over and into that more relaxed you. And see through the eyes of your more relaxed self. Hear through the ears of your more relaxed self and feel this deeper relaxation. And I'd like you to imagine traveling out into the future a year from now. It's a year from now. And you've had one of the best years of your life. It's been amazing. It's been fantastic. And if that's true, if you've had one of the best years of your life, what must have occurred in regard to your health, mental and physical? If you've had one of the best years of your life, what must have occurred in regard to your relationships, personal and professional? If you've had one of the best years of your life, what must have occurred in regard to your career? If you've had one of the best years of your life, what must have happened in regard to your finances? If you've had one of the best years of your life, what must have happened in regard to your general levels of happiness? And what I'd like you to do is to float back from that and make it into a big, bright, bold picture with you in it a year from now, looking healthy, happy, and successful. And whatever things in that image symbolize health, happiness, and success, they're there as well. Maybe you're with family or friends, or maybe you're there's some symbol of success in business or something else but you look at that picture and it tells you your life is great then I'd like you to make that picture really big like a cinema screen size huge that's it colorful it's a year off in the future come back three months and ask yourself what needed to have happened three months before that in order for that to be true and you might know or you might just have a sense of it and maybe make a picture of that that represents that a smaller picture and then float back three months from that and ask yourself, what needed to have happened three months before that in order for those good things to have occurred a year from now? And you might know, and you might just have a sense of it. Then float back three months from that and ask yourself, what needed to have happened three months before? And all the way back to now. So when you look at the next year, you can see pictures of you, healthy, happy, and successful. Three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, that's it. And brighten them all up. And as they move further away from you, they get bigger and brighter. That's right. And you can see the general direction of your life happier, 
more fulfilled than ever before and put pictures of you two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, however long you want, way off into the future of you looking healthy, happy and successful. So when you look at your timeline, your unconscious knows that's the direction to take your life. That's the direction in which you want your life to go. You want your life to be filled with all this happiness and pleasure and joy. That's the direction in which you would like your life to go. That's it. There you go. And now you've got a direction and it's compelling. Keep this in mind. And remember to think about it regularly. Because I'd like to talk to that part of you. I'll refer to as the controller. Part of you that likes to be in control. I want to thank it for doing all the good things that it does for you. But just for now, if it could do them from the background of your mind, of your experience, I'd appreciate that. Just move off into the background. So you can let go of trying to control things in this moment. Next, I'd like to talk to that part of you who we'll refer to as the protector, part of you that keeps you safe. And I'd like it to continue to do all the positive things that it does for you, but for now, from the background of your experience. So just move off into the background and you're safe. Now I'd like to talk to that part of you we'll refer to as the evaluator, part of you that judges, analyzes, critiques. And I want to thank it for doing all the good things it does for you, but just for now, I'd like it to move off into the background of your experience so you can let go of judging, analyzing, critiquing you in this moment. Now, I'd like to talk to that part of you we refer to as ambition or desire, part of you that gets you things. I'd like to thank it for doing the things it does for you, but for now, move off into the background of your experience. So you can let go of any desire in this moment. Now, I'd like to talk to that part of you we'll refer to as the seeking mind, the mind that seeks the way. I'd like it to continue to do all the good things that it does for you, but for now, from the background of your experience. Now, I'd like to talk to non-seeking, contented mind. Because right now, there's nowhere else to be. There's nothing to be done. Everything is perfectly as it is. Now I'd like to talk to big mind. How big are you? How small are you? When are you? Is there anything you're not? And in this experience of expanded consciousness, take any problems, challenges, worries, concerns, and drop them in and allow them to transform. Any fears, any self-doubt, any of it dissolves and transforms. And you will be a happier person for the rest of your life. You'll feel so good for no reason other than we've asked your unconscious mind to increase the serotonin, dopamine, the endorphins, all the feel good, happy neurotransmitters. That's right. Because when you think about happy times, it makes you feel good. And the more you think about them as you will, the happier you'll feel because your natural default setting will be one of a happier person. In fact, when you think about yourself now, an even happier image of you comes to mind. Keep it in mind. So 
soon, it will be time to awaken from this experience, feeling refreshed, relaxed and alert, calm and confident, with a renewed sense of optimism and deep inner joy. But, but before you do that, reinforce every positive thought you've ever had about yourself. And anything else that needs fixing on the inside, I'd like your unconscious mind to just go and do it. Thank you. Ten, nine, eight. That's right. Beginning to return now to normal waking consciousness, bringing with you so many good feelings from this deeply relaxing experience. Six, five, four. That's right. You might want to stretch it in your orders. You awaken. Four, three, two, one. Wide awake. Wakey, wakey. Rise and shine. Oh, who feels good? Yeah. You know, I, I went in it really fast because we were overrunning, and I've actually, I've got five minutes left. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I just got time for one quick technique. I don't know if you'd be interested in this. So, yes. so it's just really interesting. A um, couple of my friends, they're university professors, and they, one in the US and one in the UK, and they both made studies about people who are lucky, right? And some people are disproportionately luckier than other people, right? And part of it is, if you know, people who believe they're lucky are luckier. You know, one of the studies was done for the, for the actual, for the, in Nevada, for the um, casinos. So they wanted to understand why are some gamblers so much luckier, right? And, uh, and partly it's because they believe they're lucky, and they've got a whole like, mindset. So one of the experiments was, um, Dr. Weisman would give the, um, uh, the p- participants a newspaper, and he'd say, count how many pictures are in this newspaper, please. And on page three, there would be, uh, a big ad that said, there are 42 pictures in this newspaper, claim your 100 pounds from the adjudicator. All the lucky people see that, all the people who believe they're unlucky don't see it, right? Because they're not filtering the universe in the same way. Now, um, I thought this was really interesting research, and um, I, I was watching this documentary a few years ago, it was about the Rolling Stones, and they were interviewing Keith Richard, right? And uh, I was actually, um, this, the guy said, um, he goes, he says, um, you know, there's a, there's a list in rock and roll of people who are most likely to die. And Keith Richards smoking a cigarette. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, uh, am I on it? And the bloke goes, actually, you're top of it. <laughs> and he, Keith Richards, he goes, well, I'll let you now get on. He goes, um, my luck hasn't run out yet. And I went, ooh, luck, like it's an energy, right? And so... What I did was I developed a technique I'm about to do with you. And, you know, it was really weird because I was standing, um, I was living in uh, Hollywood at the time, I was standing in the queue at Los, LAX, Los Angeles, at the airport, and um, there's this guy here, and suddenly he goes, my God, it's you! And I went, yes, it's me. And he went, no, you don't understand, I'm a poker player, and I've sort of lost my luck. And, you know, and I just thought, if only I could meet you, you might be able to help me. And I went, funnily enough, right? I did the technique on him, and I said, you know, there's billions of people on this planet, and, um, you know, you managed to find me. You must be a lucky motherfucker. And pop that into his mind, right? Into his mind, it went deep. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to... Yes, see? You know what I'm up to, right? So what I'd like you to do is to remember a time that you either felt lucky or you felt like everything was going your way, yeah? So you're like, yeah, just, yeah, it's all going really well. Yeah, man, you know? So I want you to do, do that, and I'd like you to close your eyes and just remember that time like you're back there again now. Return to that time and see what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel how good you felt. That's it, make the colors rich, bright, and bold, make the sounds loud, and the feeling strong, right, you're back there again. Everything's going your way, yeah. Feeling lucky, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel how good you felt. Keep the memory going, put it on a loop. Woo, that's right, going through that memory. That's it, feels good, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel how good you felt. That's right, yeah, keep remembering it. Everything's going your way. Woo, that's right, now, you'll have a feeling somewhere in your body that lets you know you feel good, you feel lucky, you feel like you're in tune with the universe. And where is that feeling? Is it in your stomach? Is it in your head? Is it around your shoulders? And give it a colour. What colour is it going to be? Is it going to be blue? Is it going to be gold? Is it going to be silver? Is it going to be some other colour? And I want you to move that colour up through your shoulders, up to the top of your head, and then down through your neck, down through your arms, down through your chest, all the way down through your legs, down to the tips of your toes, and then double the brightness of it. Double it again and again, because if your luck was at, say, 50%, let's take it up to 60. That's right. Yeah, keep going through the memory. See what you saw. Hear what you heard. Feel how good you felt. And make the colour. That's it. Make the colours rich and bright. And make that colour around you. That colour 
color that symbolizes luck. Go to 70, make it go to 80, that's it. Even more, make it brighter, make it twice as strong, twice as deep, make it go to 90, make it go to 100, then make it go to 110, 120, 130, then a million, billion, trillion percent. And then open your eyes and come on back out. Who feels good? I would say thank you very much uh, to Vishan for inviting me to come here today. I love Mind Valley. Uh, you guys are beautiful. It's uh, been wonderful sharing this experience with you, and I know I'll be sharing an experience with some of you in a, in a day or so. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, our paths cross again in the future. May God bless you. God bless you.